Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, today we are going to look at uh, a very important idea which is useful for uh, optimization in general um, and specifically for optimization problems that arise in a context of machine learning and data science. Right? So this would be the, uh, this, would, this topic would be a brief introduction to convexity. So if you remember from uh, previous uh, lectures, what we were discussing was, um, we were saying how to minimize uh, optimization functions um, and uh, we said that, for instance, if you run your gradient descent algorithm, the solution that you would get would end up being a local ma a minima or a local maxima depending on whether you are doing a gradient descent or a gradient ascent. Now, uh, we would ideally in lot of situations want to find the global minima or the global maxima. Um, and I mentioned that this is not always possible, uh, but it turns out that it is indeed possible for a certain classes of functions and uh, these classes of functions are also called as the convex functions. So now uh, before getting into convex functions, let us start with a very brief introduction about what is convexity and um, why do we care about that and later on we will slowly build up to the notion of convex functions and uh, why they are interesting. Okay, so let us begin, right? So, what this is a brief introduction to convexity. Um, so, what we want to do is we want to, at a high level, you know, if you are in the real line and let us say you look at an interval, this is between A and B, um, and we somehow want to say that this set between A and B, which we can call as A, comma B, um, is a convex set. Whereas a set something like this, which is uh, A, B, C, D, right? So it is not a convex set, right? So we do not want this, we want this. Um, in this case, it looks like there is some break in between the two pieces of the set um, and, uh, and so we do not somehow want this, right? Now the question is how can we formalize this in a more, um, you know, precise mathematical way? Uh, for that, we first have to precisely say what do we mean by uh, a convex set. To formalize the notion that we just put down here, now we are going to define what is meant by a convex set. So let me give the definition here of a convex set. Uh, we are going to think of a set, yes, this could be in general in RD, not necessarily in real numbers. This set was in real numbers, but we could in general think of a set in uh, RD. Um, and we will say uh, is a convex set, <coughs> if something happens, what should happen <coughs> if you take any two points in the set, x1 and x2, then consider the following new point that I generate from these two points, um, which is lambda times x1 plus 1 minus lambda times x2, uh, I can pick any lambda which is, which is, which lies between 0 and 1. Then I, I want this new point that I am getting from my two points that I initially picked to also lie in the set, right? So if you, if you can take any two points and any lambda between 0 and 1, and then if you compute lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2, if it, if it is also in the set S, then we will call that set X a convex set. Now what do I even mean by this, right? So what does it mean to compute lambda X1 plus 1 minus lambda X2, where lambda is between 0 and 1? Um, to, to, uh, to see this, let us look at some examples. Um, examples, let us say we are in uh, two dimension <coughs> and uh, we have a set like this, right? So this is just a set of all points that are on this green line. Now um, I take a point on this green line, which is uh, sorry, red line. Uh, I take a point on this red line, a green point, which which we'll call x1. Um, let's look at another point, x2. Now where is lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2? Let's say for lambda is half. Lambda can be anything between 0 and 1. But then if you put lambda equal to half, where is that point? Well that point would exactly be in the middle of this line segment that joins x1 and x2, right? So this is going to be half x1 uh, plus half x2. Now, 
uh, what happens when you have lambda equals 0? When you have lambda equals 0, this definition of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 simply becomes x2, right. So, this is simply 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 and whereas, this is 1 times x1 plus 0 times x2. Now, this is the case where lambda is 1, this is the case where lambda is 0 and this is the case where lambda is half. Now, as you can see, as you move lambda uh, from 1 to 0, it, it is you can think of it as a lever which kind of moves this point from x1 to x2, right. So, which means that if you want to look at the set of all points which can be produced as lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2, then that is exactly the set of points which lies on the line segment joining x1 and x2. And because of the way we have defined the set, we have defined the set which is simply the set of all red points to begin with, well this line segment completely is contained in the red line, bigger line segment and so this is a convex set, right. So, you can do this for not just for x1 and x2 that I picked, you can do this for any two points on this red line and it is easy to convince that um, yourself that um, uh, the, the line segment joining those two points should also be in the set. This is a simple example of a, a <coughs> convex set. Uh, here is another example, well let us look at a set like this, right. So, think of this as a, a slightly uh, uh, tilted circle and ellipse so to say. Um, now again here if I take any two points x1 and x2 and then look at the line segment, we are always looking at the line segment that joins two points. Um, now, that line that lies entirely within the set, right. So, I can do this for any two points, the line segment will still, maybe this is x1 dash, x2 dash, the line segment will still lie on this, inside the set. So, this is also a convex set, right. So, now is there an example that you can think of which is not a convex set and should not be too hard to think of an example. Um, Let us look at this uh, example. If you want to try it out yourself, please uh, pause and think about it. Uh, but here is an example of a set which is not convex, right. So, um, a set something like this. This is a set, <coughs> yes, which is a subset of R2, but why is this not convex? Well, if I pick two points x1 and x2, now, if I look at the line segment joining them, in this particular case, it turns out that the line segment entirely is inside the set. But this should happen for every two points x1 and x2 that I can pick from this set. Now, can you think of two points in the set where if I draw the line segment, it would not be in the set? That is no, not too hard to see, right. So, if I take x1 dash, x2 dash as two points here, now if I draw the line segment joining these, well, this is not entirely contained in the set S simply because this is not in S and so this is not convex, <coughs> right. So, this is not a convex set. Um, of course, in one dimension, uh, now if you had to come up with uh, um, all, let us let us say all possible convex sets in, uh, in one dimension. So, let us say S is a subset of R. Now, how are the convex sets going to be? Well, the only way you can have a convex set uh, which is a subset of R is if it is some interval a comma b. Of course, a can be even minus infinity, b can even be infinity, right. So, as long as a is less than b, uh, you have less than or equal to b and you have an interval of the form a comma b, then this would be a convex set. Which means that if I take two intervals <coughs> which is let us say uh, c and d, union A and B, let us say this is the interval C comma D, union the interval A comma B, this is not convex. Why is this not convex? Because simply I can take two points, one in this interval, one in this interval um, and then if I look at the line segment joining them, well there is at least one point, in this case many more infinite number of points which are not in the set, right. So, this is not in S which implies uh, is not convex, okay. So, this is the general idea of uh, convex sets. What are some interesting convex sets which will be relevant to, you know, machine learning uh, applications? Here is one set which we have, which we have seen several times but may not have realized that it is a convex set, uh, but look at this set, right. So, the set of 
the sets that we typically have been calling as half spaces. So, how do you define this? Well, think of this as um, if this is a set in uh, R d, think of this as the set of all x uh, such that uh, there is some w such that w transpose x um, e equal to let us say maybe not even half space. Let us look at the first case of a hyperplane. So, this is a hyperplane w transpose x equals p. <coughs> now, you are given some w and then you are looking at uh, the set of all uh, x which satisfies w transpose x equals p. Right? So, is this a convex set? Well, I claim it is a convex set and uh, that needs a proof. Well, uh, why the proof that this is convex. Right? So, the claim uh, hyperplanes or convex sets and the proof is not too hard, it comes directly from the definition, right. Pick any two points, x1 is in S, um, x2 is in S. Now, because of the fact that x1 is in S, we know that W transpose x1 has to be B, and because x2 is also in X, we know W transpose x2 ha also has to be B. Now, what, what do we have to show? If I take some lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 for some lambda, and now basically I am looking at the point which is on the line segment joining x1 and x2. Now, what happens to w transpose this point, new point? Well, this is simply lambda times w transpose x1 plus 1 minus lambda times w transpose x2. But I know already that because of the fact that x1 and x2 are on this line, this is also b, the w transpose x1 is also b, w transpose x2 is also b, which means this is simply lambda b plus 1 minus lambda b which is p, right. So, which implies uh, lies this belongs to s, which belongs to s, the point <coughs> lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 belongs to s, right. So, now this satisfies the definition of convexity and so this is a convex set, right. So, geometrically uh, you may already understand how this looks like. Uh, if you are in R2, <coughs> we have some w like this um, and if you are also given a b, well, we know that this is the set of all points such that w transpose x equals 0. Now, let us say b is some positive, it can be negative also, but if, if it is some positive constant, then you are essentially pushing this line parallelly uh, by some units, in this case b units. So, this would be w transpose x equals b, right. So, the geometric way of seeing this is because this is like a line in R2. Um, it necessarily has to be the case that I take any two points, the line segment will also be on this line. In more in <coughs> more generally, if it is an RD, there is not going to be a line, there is going to be like a plane, that is why it is called a hyperplane and um, you take any two points on the hyperplane that will also be on the hyperplane and so that is a convex set, okay, good. Um, an exercise, uh, not too hard, but I suggest you try this out. Now, prove um, half spaces are convex. What is, what is an half space? Um, well, it is it is like a hyperplane, but then it is instead of the equality in the definition of hyperplane, we will have an inequality, right. So, uh, given a set, uh, it is given a w, we define a set S, which is the set of all x in R d, which satisfies, um, so S is also a subset of R d. It's and it, the definition is x, the set of all x in R d is such that w transpose x is less than or equal to b, right. So, remember when this was equal to, it was a hyperplane. Now, we have made it less than or equal to, right. So, now can you prove that this is a, this is also a convex set. Um, again, the hint is use the definition and you should be able to do this, right. So, these are some uh, relevant uh, sets which will keep uh, appearing in machine learning uh, based applications and formulations and so um, it would be good to understand that these are indeed uh, convex sets.